Hello. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to this YouTube channel, Los Santos Humane, and this project of exploring cybernetics, specifically as it relates to music, but also in a broader context. So what is cybernetics? I'd like to start with a quote from Thomas Pynchon in his novel, Gravity's Rainbow. And midway through the novel, a bunch of German industrialists working at the notorious Ige Farben are conducting a seance to resurrect the spirit of Walter Rathenau. Rathenau was the finance minister for the Weimar Republic. He was a well-known industrial technocrat and he was assassinated in 1922 by right-wing paramilitaries. But in the book he says to the group, if you want the truth, you must look into the technology of these matters, even into the hearts of certain molecules. It is they, after all, which dictate temperatures, pressures, rates of flow, costs, profits, the shapes of towers. You must ask two questions. First, what is the real nature of synthesis? And then, what is the real nature of control? I think cybernetics is a useful lens for investigating these two questions. Now, after World War II, Norbert Wiener and Claude Shannon made major breakthroughs in the science of information technology and what would more broadly come to be called cybernetics. And I think as a good starting definition, we can turn to Norbert Wiener's 1948 book called Cybernetics and its subtitle, Control and Communication in the Animal and the Machine. Cybernetics is fundamentally about analyzing systems that use feedback which is feeding the output, feeding some output signal back into the input signal that allows the system to adapt to changes in its environment. This leads us to the idea of machine intelligence, but also ideas of autonomous systems and systems that can be self-regulating. Indeed, currently in the 21st century landscape of data capitalism and machine learning, these ideas are very important but those fields are fundamentally not cybernetic. And why do I say that? Well, as another definition of cybernetics, I turn to the German composer, Roland Kane. And the liner notes to his first sort of major breakthrough work, Simultan. And in the liner notes to Simultan, Kane tries to describe cybernetics and how it's different from other types of music that were going on at the time, this being the early 70s. Uh, so musique concrète, electronic music, computer music. And as a way of distinguishing cybernetic music from those other approaches, Kane says cybernetic music is involved in process planning, feedback loops, control processes. That it's the, sus it's the suspension of the dichotomy between automatic or dead and anthropogenic or live systems. And I see cybernetics in very much the same way, as a sort of dialectic between the autonomous, the algorithmic, or the dead, and the anthropogenic, or the human, the alive. Machine learning, in the way it's used these days, it can be thought of as a sort of dead system because it is fundamentally driven by machine logic towards optimizing a certain value. Using techniques such as stochastic gradient descent, machine learning systems are driven towards some optimization point, usually the minimization of some error, and are fundamentally driven by this sort of algorithmic machine logic. Capitalism as well can be seen as a sort of dead system. In capital, Volume 1, Karl Marx talks about the role of the capitalist, and that when a capitalist steps into the process of production, when a capitalist takes money out of his pocket and wants to turn it into capital, at that moment, whoever that person is as an individual is put by the wayside, and that person dons the robe of the capitalist. All of their humanity, all of their individuality is, at this moment, gone, and they are driven by the fundamental drive of the capitalist, namely the search for surplus value. So in this way, we can also see capitalism 
as driven by this algorithmic logic. And as a third sort of point, I'd like to come back to Norbert Wiener's 1948 book and read from the introduction, where Wiener says, perhaps I may clarify the historical background of the present situation. If I say that the first industrial revolution, the revolution of the dark satanic mills, was the devaluation of the human arm by the competition of machinery. There is no rate of pay at which the United States pick and shovel laborer can live, which is low enough to compete with the work of a steam shovel as an excavator. The modern industrial revolution is similarly bound to devalue the human brain, at least in its simpler or more routine decisions. Of course, just as the skilled carpenter, the skilled mechanic, the skilled dressmaker have in some degree survived the first industrial revolution, so the skilled scientist and the skilled administrator may survive the second. However, taking the second revolution as accomplished, the average human being of mediocre attainments or less has nothing to sell that it is worth anyone's money to buy. The answer, of course, is to have a society based on human values other than buying or selling. To arrive at this society, we need a good deal of planning and a good deal of struggle. And I think in here and throughout cybernetics and its follow-up called The Human Use of Human Beings, Wiener also comes to cybernetics as this sort of dialectic between the machine and the human. Returning to music, I see cybernetics as this sort of dialectic between free improvisation on the one hand and autonomous algorithmic self-generating systems on the other. For example, the kind of AI-driven algorithmic music created by algorithms at Spotify, for example, that replicate what has come before and are optimized and evaluated along certain metrics are fundamentally algorithmic and following this dead sort of logic. Cybernetics is a way of imbuing autonomous systems with a sort of liveliness found in nature. Indeed, natural systems are full of the kind of nonlinear feedback mechanisms that I'm exploring in this channel. Analog computers have actually made a comeback in recent years due to the ways, due to the specific ways in which analog feedback works as opposed to digital feedback. These analog computers have been found to actually replicate things like biological systems much better than digital computers can. And the Surge, which is in some ways an analog computer, but specialized, can allow us to do this same thing, to pull from these biological systems, natural systems, and create these sort of cybernetic sounds. And finally, I want to come back to the title of, of this channel, La Santes Humaine, Human Synthesis. And I want to highlight this sort of humanity. Too often as musicians, as people playing with modular synthesizers, we have our analytic brain on, and we are analyzing the sounds as we hear them and comparing them to what they think that they should be. And I want to use this channel to develop some techniques to create interesting sounds, but also to allow those sounds to come to us and to listen to them and accept them for what they are. To turn that analytic part of our brain off and just explore the world of sound that these cybernetic techniques can help unlock. A little bit about me, I'm a musician who used to make music under the name Gunnar Haslam. I now make music under the name Sky Hobsbawm and Emil Zenner. Emil Zenner being the name I use for my explicitly cybernetic music, though cybernetics has really come to influence not just all of my music making, but also the way in which I see the world. So I hope this video has been of some interest, and I hope you stick with me as we explore the world of cybernetics in music, and perhaps even go a bit further into cybernetics in a broader sense. I started a Patreon, so if you like my work, I would really appreciate your support over there. But either way, I thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in future ones. Thanks.